2019, we have a whole new line of circle track units. We're really excited about these. We've got an improved detection method, uh, improved overall performance speed, built-in data acquisition, Bluetooth, tons of new features. These units all feature a built-in uh, screen or remote touchscreen to make it very easy to adjust all the different parameters you can adjust and very simple to use. So we have units starting uh, at our entry level unit like the CT1 all the way up to the very small CT5 SL that we'll take a look at here in a minute. These units work like we've always done with rates of acceleration of the engine, which simply means if there's a spike in the engine RPM, the unit detects that spike, which was caused by slip in the tires, and pulls ignition timing out, retards the timing. That calms the motor down, makes the car much easier to drive. This results in lower lap times, lower tire temperatures, extended tire life, and just overall better performance of the car. These units work better than any we've ever built before, so if you've had some of our past units, these are unbelievable. Let's take a look at how these units work on our race simulator so you can see how the corrections are made in real time on the racetrack. Today we'll be using our race simulator, which we can take a recorded run from the racetrack, replay it into the traction control system, and analyze its results. You'll see here it has a standard racing distributor. Up top you'll see the traction control mounted. And then here you can see an LED bar graph that will indicate the amount of retard. For this demonstration, we'll be using a Davis Technology CT3SL with an LED on the top that will indicate any retard activity. And you can also see it's set to sensitivity 7 and a max retard of 20 degrees. For this demonstration, we'll also be using our distributor machine, which can spin a standard race distributor and show the effects the track control has on the timing of the engine. Here it's at zero degrees retard, and you'll see the slight drops as the traction control functions with wheel slip, and you'll see it drop down as far as 30 degrees in this example. That's 15 degrees of distributor rotation, which turned in half engine speed, which would be 30 degrees of timing retard on the crankshaft with a timing light. Now we'll run the simulator of a lap of a Winston Cup car at Greenville Pickens. We're going to play this into a data acquisition system where we can see in real time how the traction control responds to the spikes in engine RPM. Here the engine RPM is recorded in yellow and the timing activity in blue. When the spike is detected, you'll see the timing trace go up the screen to indicate a retard. Notice how fast the detection is made. Let's take a closer look at that data. If we zoom in, we can see in the engine RPM spikes that indicate wheel slip here and here. If you look below, you'll see corresponding corrections in the timing. So when the tire slipped, the traction control detected the slip and caused a retard in ignition timing to reduce the slip. If we watch that again. You can see the timing retard each time you hear the engine speed spike up due to tire slip. You can see this in the LED on the traction control itself, as well as the LEDs on the uh, distributor machine indicating the amount of retard, as well as the uh, LED bar graph on the simulator uh, showing the amount of retard.
down, let's take a look at all three systems at once. The simulator, the distributor machine, and the data acquisition system. You can see how fast the tractor trawl reacts and how accurate the detection system is. Hopefully this demonstration has helped illustrate how good the track stroll is at picking up tire slip and how quickly it reacts to pull timing out to control that slip. This will result in lower lap times, lower tire temps, longer tire life, and better overall performance of the car, as well as being much easier to drive and much more raceable. Lastly, let's take a quick look at the parameters you can set with the built-in LCD display, as well as the remote color touchscreen display. Here's a summary screen for currently on sensitivity 7, max retard 21, correction spread of 150, and correction hold of 9. We'll explain those later. But you use the uh, select button to scroll through the menu. There's main, advanced, RPM, utilities, and system settings. Back to main, we want to change something. We can change sensitivity. Sensitivity is currently on 7. Let's go to 8. We're done with that. Retards on 21. We want to start over. Hit this one. Hold that one there. Then we can scroll back up. We'll set it to 15. That's that. So you can go through the different menus and set things. Okay, hold this down and go back. And let's go down to uh, Utilities. On Utilities, we can check the current firmware under about. We can test the outputs. We can go into a tachometer mode which is useful to make sure you've got uh, RPM signal. So we go to uh, test outputs. That's going to sweep through the timing. You can see the LED going to full retard. And then it'll ramp the timing back in. And you'll see the LED go off. Okay. And then in tachometer mode, it's just that. It's got RPM. It's reading like a tachometer. And then the bottom line will tell you what part of the program you're in. Right now it's waiting for the auto start RPM. Okay. So on the auto start RPM, if we go to RPM settings, we can set the auto start. It's currently at 3,000. We're going to change it to 3,500. That's where we'll start working uh, the first time once you go out on the track. And then we can set a max RPM. Oops. Set a max RPM. That's where it's going to stop. It won't work above that RPM. We're going to reset that back to there. After 8,000, we're not going to make any more corrections. And we can set a minimum RPM. It's currently 3,500. Below 3,500, it won't make any corrections. And then end time three, if it drops below 3,500 for three seconds, it'll shut back off, let you make laps under caution, and wait for you to cross the auto start RPM again, 3,500, before it begins making corrections. So that's a quick coverage of the screen. We've got a built-in LCD, two simple buttons. We also have USB. You can do some things there. And we'll go over the auxiliary port and the remote handheld. Okay, now let's take a look at the remote display. It's a nice uh, color touchscreen. You plug it in here. Plug into the auxiliary port. And then you basically have just uh, the same thing you have on the onboard screen. Go to main. You can set your sensitivity, your max retard, correction spread, correction hold, back. You can go into the utilities menu, run those same tests. You can uh, go into advanced settings, change the ramp in, see how fast it's going to ramp the time back in, maximum uh, cylinders you drop if you're going to drop cylinders in some cases. 
So that's the remote display. It's a nice little unit. Works with all the new Circle Track units. And there'll be one available in the wired version and a wireless Bluetooth.